guys, Jeremy here and welcome back to another video. So I'm going to show you guys one of the methods that I use to put your iPhone screenshots into an iPhone frame to make a really cool effect. Now this is a very common question people ask a lot. What do you use to frame up your screenshots and make them look the way they do? Now there are a few different options. There is also um, a shortcut called a showcase that you can use, which is totally free. I've done a video on that in the past. Uh, there's also the Screenshot X application that was made by June's iPhone. That's a really cool method as well. That one kind of gives you custom mockups as well. Uh, but this is my preferred method and this is the way I do it for most of my screenshots that I do share uh, when I share a setup or something with my iPhone. So for example, um, yesterday there was a a challenge um, in the um, f uh, the fitness app and it was for the Valentine's Day uh, I forgot the name of it it was to work out or uh, get 60 minutes on your exercise ring so I took a screenshot and then I made this image out of that screenshot so I'm basically gonna show you guys how I did this in this video now there's a couple of applications at play uh, so we'll go through everything so first off I am using it's called SM Pro and it stands for Screen Maker Pro. This is from the App Store. I believe it's initial download. I think it is free, um, but then if you want certain iPhone frames, you do have to purchase them within the application. So it's not free by any means, but like I said, I like using this because I have the most freedom uh, with this application, I feel. I can customize these to be however I want. So as you can see, you have your iPhone frame here. now. To start this off, you can go into settings and at the top there's an input and the mock-up. So I, as you can see, I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max Graphite because uh, that's which iPhone 12 I have. So if you go into mock-up, you can see there's a bunch to choose from. There's iPhone 12, 12 mini, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, 11, 11 Pro, Pro Max SE2, uh, 10R, there's iPad frames, there's an iPad. Uh, pod frame there's Apple watch frames there's even Mac frames which is really really cool and then you have uh, the legacy devices here like iPhone 8 uh, all of those old iPhones and as you can see there's even classic iPads at the bottom there as well now like I said this I believe is free um, it'll probably have a watermark or something like that in it and then you can purchase it if you like it like I said uh, for me this was a hands-down purchase I think it was just a couple of bucks and to me it's worth it just because you can really make your your screenshots look cool so within the 12 pro max as you can see i can choose from graphite silver gold pacific blue there's portrait there's landscape there's three quarters left there's three quarters right there is 3d and as you guys can see that's what they look like so i'll just do this one that i have selected for example so once you've chose the mock-up you like you can jump into your photos and you can choose a screenshot. Um, so let's just go ahead and I will just use, I guess, a wallpaper, for example. We'll just do this one. And as you can see, it loads the screenshot as um, as an iPhone. Now that has an iPhone frame connected. Now there's more, option than, more options than this. There's the ability to fit the image. So if you're using the wrong size device, you can actually fit the image to make it look correct. There's a screen reflection. There's also an effect, as you can see, there's a bottom shadow, ground reflection, uh, bottom shadow with ground reflection. There's a soft shadow, drop shadow, there's a left hand or a right hand. So you can use any of these effects. I guess what I'll do is I'll use this one and then you can change the background as well. I like to do this myself in a different application, but you can customize the background. Um, you can use your own image, as you can see at the bottom there, or use different palettes or colors or whatever you want. There is total freedom over that. And then you do have adjustments. You can change the, the positioning. As you can see, full range of adjustments here on the, uh, on the screenshot, which is pretty amazing. You have an input image here, as you can see. You can change the contrast, satura saturation. Like I said, there's just tons of controls within this. There is the mock-up itself. Um, some of these, I know you can actually change the angle of them as well, like on those three quarters or 3D ones, you can actually change the angle at which the iPhone frame is displayed, which is pretty cool. You have adjustments to the shadow there. You have ground reflection size right there, so you can change the size of the ground reflection. 
You have your output sizing here, so resize image, none, and then you can actually do screen recordings with frames as well, which is really neat. And then you have some restore defaults, download, advanced, help, register, et cetera, at the bottom. So I did change a couple of things. I changed the effect, so let's back up. And as you can see now, I do have a shadow at the bottom. Now, typically what I do is I don't keep any of the shadows, and I'm gonna gear this towards how I use it. So I'm gonna click none at the top there. If we back up, as you can see, there is no ground reflections or anything. And I usually like to take the screen reflection off as well to make it look nice and flat. So there you go. As you can see, there is my screenshot. Now from here, all you gotta do is click save and it will save it to your photos application. That's all you gotta do. And like I said, you have full, full control over all the different devices, iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, etc. You have the ability to change the colors of them as well. Like I could switch this to, Let's change it to like the 3D gold, just to show you guys the difference. And bam, as you can see, it looks totally different. You can actually zoom way in on it. So you can use this to make some pretty amazing mock-ups in my opinion. Uh, so I think you guys get the idea of the application. Now, when I create my, um, my images, I actually go into Pixelmator and it should be left off right where I was last night, as you can see there. I'm gonna back up and create it from scratch so you guys see how I use Pixelmator now. Um, I use a default size for these. I do 2000 by 2000 in size, pixel size. I find that that just is the most resolution I can push. I could make it bigger if I wanted, but that seems to be a sweet spot in my opinion for having enough detail. Uh, but first thing I like to do typically, it really depends on how you want to customize this. But usually what I do is I bring in just that original screenshot first, and then I just stretch it out so that it takes up the entire box usually something like that. And then what I like to do is go into the effects, add effect, and then I add the blur. And this blur is totally customizable how blurry you want it. I usually set it to something about like, about like that maybe. Click on apply, click done. And then now I add that screenshot with the frame over the top of that. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. Now another cool thing you could do is maybe you could adjust the color of this. Um, by making it maybe uh, a little less bright so that the screenshot pops out just a little bit more, maybe something like that, as you can see. And that's basically how I make my screenshots. Now there's a ton, a ton of different varieties. It's all up to your imagination. Let's say we don't like the apps being behind there. Another cool thing that I like to do is I like to put just the original screen or wallpaper that I'm using in. That can always be a really cool effect as well. So let's go ahead and stretch this out get it roughly to the size of the screen here. Maybe about like that. And as you can see, that is mimicking the wallpaper that I'm using and it doesn't have the app icons. And what you can do is kind of line this up with the screenshot. And as you can see, it almost looks seamless. So it's just another idea. And literally I just thought of that off the top of my head. And of course, I like to do them in square because I think it makes them turn out nice, nice and even looking. Um, of course, if you guys have like a logo or something, like I have my uh, my IDM logo that I can use, which is going to be in, actually it's gonna be in my desktop right here. And then it's gonna be in my new graphics and my watermark is right there. So then what I can do is move this to the top layer. And this is just a quick, a very quick rundown on how I make these because I have a lot of people ask me, they're like, how, how do you make these? And I I'm pretty happy that I can actually, if I can grab this, I can actually do this all standalone on my iPhone. So we just resize it like that. We can back up a little bit, see what we're working with. And then drag that maybe down to the corner for when it snaps right there. And then we can even change the opacity so it looks a little bit more like a real watermark, like so. And that's how I added my watermark to that screenshot. Now this is something that I honestly would share on Twitter. This is basically how I do it. Let's copy it to photos. Let's exit out of Pixelmator. Let's go take a look at this image. Oh, we are in the wrong application. Let's go in here and go to the bottom. And there is the image that I created right on video for you guys. And that's what it looks like. And that's kind of a method that you can do to make your, you know, showing off, a, you know, a setup or, or icons or widgets or something. You can make it look really cool. This is the way I like to do it personally. Of course, there's many other options. I'll probably cover other stuff in the future, but this is 
how I currently create them on my iPhone and I think they look really, really nice. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Also, forgot to mention, I will leave links uh, for everything you guys will need in the description. So it'll be a link to um, Screen Maker Pro in the App Store. And then I'll also leave a link for Pixelmator if you guys want to pick that up. It is a paid application, but it's very powerful and I highly recommend it. Uh, but anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.